the streets suddenly stop biting each other. Why people with bite wounds coming back to life? Not as a vampire, but as something completely else? Did your train ride get delayed due to a sick passenger? If one or more of these questions can be answered with yes and you are not attending a local orgy, you are most likely stuck within the zombie apocalypse. But do not fret, dear citizens, because with this audio broadcast guide brought to you by the Ministry of Paranormal Defense, your captain will guide you to safety. If you find yourself in the zombie apocalypse, it is important to remain calm and remember, zombies may bark, but they don't bite. Speaking of course, zombies may appear to be a threat, but our studies have shown that zombie bites are amongst the least fatal wounds out there. People who are bitten often can leave the hospital only minutes after being bitten. When dealing with a zombie threat, you must quickly decide what kind of zombie it is. First, we have slow, jerkied looking zombies that will walk with jerky motions. These are your undead regulars. The second type of zombie, however, can be far more dangerous. They are fast, cunning, harder to stop, and almost never die. <laughs> Of course I'm talking about sexy zombies. Now, for listeners who want to know how to survive a sexy undead, I'll refer you to our other guide, Monster Girls and I, How to Survive. For now, let's just focus on the regular zombies and how to survive. Now, these zombies can again be divided into two classes, walkers and runners. Both classes share similar strength, endurance, vitality, and spreading behavior. Their main difference is speed. If you haven't figured out what kind of zombie you are dealing with right now, it's most likely a walker. Walking zombies are easy to avoid since you can outrun them by walking in a straight line. These creatures only pose a threat when one finds themselves stuck with one in a small enclosed space. If you, listener, get stuck with a zombie, our research suggests not getting stuck with a zombie. In the rare event you somehow managed to disregard the previous piece of advice, it might be that you have no other option but to fight, using any kind of weapon you can find. If you are an American, I suggest using a Glock 19 or any other uh, weapon you can remember from Call of Duty. If you are from the other 90% of the world, things will be a lot harder. Like many things, be remember that anything can be used as a weapon. Favorites are baseball bats, crowbars, crossbows, and diamond sword intended with smite. If none of these are available, I suggest using anything you can find that will create some distance between you and your undead attackers. Chairs, brooms, and trash can lids make for amazing weapons. Now consider the dead reliant sight. Even throwing a towel on their face can stun them for a second, which might save your life. In general, these zombies are rarely more dangerous than your average Black Friday sale when you manage to keep your head straight and avoid such sales. When dealing with runner-type zombies, I recommend you to follow the Michael Myers method. Run as long as you can, avoid closed spaces. When you can no longer run, find a spot to take on your pursuer on your own turns and eliminate the threat with one mighty strike. Runner zombies are fast, but luckily for you, brave citizens, getting caught by them will also result in a fast death. If you are in a tight situation, one Hail Mary is to throw one of your companions under the busan. This will keep the runners occupied and the chance is your companions won't hold it against you for too long. Again, our advice is to keep 1.5 meter or 6 feet if you have a gun distance from any runner if you find. Now, during the outbreak, you may find yourself inside either a movie or a serialized show. Are you inside a show? Then your chances of survival are increased drastically. As long as you can find a way to remain relevant to the plot, you'll be walking around behind. That is, of course, until the show itself dies and becomes a walking dead. Are you inside a feature-length film? Then, your chances of survival become 50-50. Depending on how handsome you are, be mindful that being handsome can also lead to a self-sacrifice. To maximize your chances of survival, it is best to be the protagonist's wife or child. If you are neither of them, then your best sense of survival is to stay inside. Close your windows and avoid contact with other people. Basically, your daily routine, minus having to pay for groceries. If you find yourself in this situation, your safest bet is to stock up on food, play offline games, and read books while the world is going to shit. Again, not too dissimilar from your current situation. Again, minus the books. Prepare yourself by memorizing your local area, shortcuts and grocery stores. Do some light exercise to keep yourself fit, and remember to avoid making noise, lest you want your undead neighbors to wake up. You better enjoy this apocalypse to its fullest, because before you know it, the military will seize control and manage to restart society, forcing you to go back to being a useful member of society and pay taxes again. Now that would make me wish there was an apocalypse. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to say that on air as we are paid with your taxes. <coughs> well, I believe the guide has covered almost all the essentials besides dealing with the other survivors, how to hide you've been bitten, not making 360 no scopes, and defending your loved ones. This guide has been put together by the Ministry of Paranormal Defense. This was your captain speaking. Good luck with the zombies outside and communications. <laughs>